Feel better? You had that coming, you know. You're a petty, vindictive tyrant. You can't get past my rejection, so you take it out on Laura. I'm going to tell you something. You better not try anything again, because I'll take you on the rest of my life. But you are not going to hurt my daughter. But she'll go on hurting you. She's an impudent gutter snipe, and she's been that ever since she got to this town. Oh, now she's a gutter snipe. I see. I see. When you're trying to curry my favor, Adam, she was a challenge. You tried to woo her to get to me. It's just a variation on the same sick game, and I have a newsflash for you. She's not a non-entity. She matters. She matters to me. And I love her. Without reserve, without conditions. I love her with all of my heart. But well, actions speak louder than words, Boo. That slap spoke volumes. You know what? You will never know the depth of feeling that I have for both of my girls. For you to suggest that they're interchangeable. You'll never begin to know what it's like to love somebody. Never. Glass of water, yeah. please. Sure. Thanks. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm just so mad I could spit. What's up? What happened? Adam happened again, as usual. I let him get to me again, as usual. Say, I like the sound of that. He accused Laura of stealing something from his house. And then he accused me of using Laura as some sort of surrogate stand-in daughter. You should have popped him one on the jaw. I did. You did? I did. But it didn't help. You know, he has such colossal nerve. Really, to make the suggestion that I would adopt one daughter to replace another daughter. I adopted Laura because... because she brought such life into this house. I mean, she dared me to love her. She drew a line and I crossed it and I just kept on doing that. Until there wasn't anything between us. There was nothing except there was love and I... I held out my hand and Laura grabbed onto it and I love her for that. And I love her for so much more, and I don't know why Adam doesn't understand that. Yeah, because he's a... because he's a fool, all right? Now look, we love the things we love for what they are. And you should know that. And the way you love Laura, it's beyond compare. Okay, so um, what do I do with these? Put them in your mouth. <laughs> You're joking, right? Oh, I'm quite serious. It will teach you how to enunciate perfectly. Okay. Ah. Now, say something. Okay, what should I say? Come again. What, what should I say? Well, just say, uh, try saying, she sells seashells on the seashore. Okay. She sells, she sells on the seashore. Project, darling. Enunciate clearly. Nice round, big tones. She, she sells, she sells on the seashore. What, what is it? 
I swallowed one. Oh, dear. Well, don't worry. It's good roughage. I love Phoebe. Hello, Margot. Mm. How are you, darling? Mm. Hey, what's all this? Uh, Aunt Phoebe is trying to teach me how to live. Yes. I don't, uh, <clears throat> I don't think I quite caught that. I'm uh, instructing young Laura in the fine points of being a lady in society. Oh, honey, that's a lot of rubbish. I mean, she's perfect just the way she is, right off the rack. Yeah, well, right? Well, Scott's Uncle Adam thinks I'm pond scum. Well, I've got news for you. Scott thinks you are the cat's meow. Typical do and Tyler, too. No relation. Myrtle, I keep opening up my big mouth and sticking my foot in it, especially in front of Scott's family. Well, darling, if you're having something nice, then just don't say anything at all. Who asked your advice, anyway? Well, actually, I did. You know, I... I Mr. Chandler thinks I'm not fit to shine his Italian leather shoes, Well, so. listen, Mr. Chandler, when he was grown up, did not have a pair of shoes to shine. So, uh... Do you remember where he came from? Pigeon Hollow. Now, that is not the main line. So you might just have more in common with Mr. Chandler than you and Mr. Chandler know. Well, maybe, but I still, I just, I want to fit into Scott's life. Oh, honey, honey, listen, listen to Myrtle. Now, you do not have to drink your tea, you know, with your pinky out like that. And with people like Adam, you just have to, uh, be patient, mind your manners, and mind your mouth. Listen, honey, don't you change too much because I love you to death the way you are. And I bet you Scott does too. I'm not going to let Adam take his anger against me out on her. Hey, she's a kid. God, you think he'd realize she's suffered quite enough in a short lifetime. And no, you know, I, I, I'm not the answer to all her problems. I, I know that. You're the answer to a prayer. You bring out the best in everyone you touch. Adam just sees me spinning my wheels on lost causes. I'm telling you, he is the one that's lost. You're right. He knows all those buttons to push. Well, yeah. I guess it's because he installed them. Hey. Maybe it's time to disconnect. Permanently. I want a word with you, mister. I believe you forgot to knock. Wait a minute. I gather you heard Brooke, and that is unacceptable in my book. Oh, your limited powers of comprehension can't begin to grasp the dynamic I have with Brooke. You wounded her deeply, and I'm here to tell you, no more. I won't accept it. I'm shaking in my shoes. Well, you should be, because you know something? You hurt her again, and it'll be my turn to deal out the pain. Grasp that. Good afternoon, mate. What? Lovely weather we're having. Do you think it might rain? I give up. Who are you supposed to be? Behold. Right? Mm -hmm. The portrait of a lady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. I get it. You're in the school play, yes? No! Oh. I got a crash course from, from Aunt Phoebe and Myrtle. How to be... How, how to be a society deb in one easy lesson. I see. I was fine, so I need a little practice. Uh, so, can I be so bold as to inquire who are you trying to impress? Scott, of course. <laughs> he told me today that he loves me. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> That's... You don't look very happy. That's because, um... I'm like crazy out of my mind 
in love with him and I don't have a clue what to do about it. 